Birds are dinosaurs. Birds are living dinosaurs. We actually classify them as dinosaurs. We now call them non-avian dinosaurs and avian dinosaurs. So the non-avian dinosaurs are the big clunky ones that went extinct. Avian dinosaurs are our modern birds. So we don't have to make a dinosaur. So I already have them. I know you're, you're, as, you're as bad as the sixth graders, right? The sixth graders look at it and they say, no. You can call it, you can call it a dinosaur, but look at the velociraptor. The velociraptor is cool. The chicken is not. So this is our problem, as you can imagine. The chicken is a dinosaur. I mean, it really is. I mean, you, you can't argue with it because we, you know, we're the classifiers and we've classified it that way. <laughs> but the sixth graders demand it. Fix the chicken. So, so that's what I'm here to tell you about, how we're going to fix a chicken. So we have a number of, of ways that we actually can fix the chicken. Because evolution works, we actually have some evolutionary tools. We'll call them biological modification tools. We have selection. And we know selection works, right? I mean, we started out with a wolf-like creature and we end up with a Maltese. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's, that's definitely genetic modification or any of the other funny looking little dogs. We also have transgenesis. Transgenesis is really cool too. That's where you take a gene out of one animal and stick it in another one. That's how we, you know, that's how people made glowfish. You take a gene, a glow gene out of a, out of a coral or a, or a jellyfish and you stick it in a zebra fish and they glow. And you know, that's pretty cool. And they obviously make a lot of money off of them. And now they're, you know, they're making glow rabbits and uh, uh, glow all sorts of things. And I guess we could make a glow chicken. <laughs> but I don't think that'll satisfy the sixth graders either. But there's another thing, and there's what we call atavism activation. And atavism activation is basically, an atavism is, a, is an ancestral characteristic. You know, you've, you've heard that occasionally children are born with tails. And it's because it's an ancestral characteristic. And so there are a number of atavisms that can happen. Snakes are occasionally born with legs. And here's an example. This is a chicken with teeth. A fellow by the name of Matthew Harris at the University of Wisconsin in Madison actually figured out a way to stimulate the gene of teeth, for teeth, and so was able to actually turn the tooth gene on and produce teeth in, in chickens, which, now that's a good characteristic. We can, we can save that one, right? We, we know we can use that. We can make a chicken with teeth. That's getting closer. That's better than a glowing chicken. A friend of mine, a, a colleague of mine, Dr. Hans Larsen at McGill University, is actually looking at atavisms, and he's looking at them by looking at the embryogenesis of birds and actually looking at how they develop. And he's interested in how birds actually lost their tail. He's also interested in the transformation of the arm, the hand, to the wing. He's looking for those genes as well. And I said, well, you know, if you can find those, I can just reverse them and make what I need to make for the sixth graders. And so he agreed, and so that's what we're looking into. If you look at dinosaur hands, a velociraptor has that cool looking hand with the claws on it. Archaeopteryx, which is a bird, a primitive bird, still has that very primitive hand, but as you can see, the pigeon or a chicken or anything else, so like a bird, has kind of a weird looking hand because the hand is a wing. But the cool thing is, is that if you look in the embryo, as the embryo is developing, the hand actually looks 
pretty much like the Archaeopteryx hand. It has the three fingers, the three digits. But a gene turns on that actually fuses those together. And so what we're looking for is that gene. We want to stop that gene from turning on, fusing those hands together, so we can get a chicken that hatches out with a three-fingered hand, like the Archaeopteryx. And the same goes for the tails. Birds have, basically, rudimentary tails. And so we know that in embryo, as the animal is developing, it actually has a relatively long tail. But a gene turns on and resorbs the tail, gets rid of it. So that's the other gene we're looking for. We want to stop that tail from resorbing. So what we're trying to do really is take our chicken, modify it, and make a chickenosaurus. <laughs> it's a cooler looking chicken. I mean, but it's just the very basics. So that really is what we're doing. And people always say, well, you know, why do that? Why make this thing? What good is it? Well, that's a good question. You know, actually, I think it's a great way to teach kids about evolutionary biology and developmental biology and all sorts of things. And quite frankly, I think if, if uh, Colonel Sanders was to be careful how he worded it, he could actually advertise an extra piece. Anyway, when our dino chicken hatches, it will be obviously the poster child or what you might call the poster chick for technology, entertainment, and design. Thank you.